Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, as you know, the International Rules Series, the, the one match, uh, will be held in Perth on 22nd of November. So we're delighted with that. Uh, the Perth crowd have been fantastic supporters for this concept in the past. And only having one match in Australia, we decided we'd bring it to Perth because of uh, to reward that and to make sure that this event is showcased as best as it can be. You, you know that we've had some issues over the last couple of series and we're determined to make this one uh, very different. I'm wrapped to formally announce that Ross Lyon will join the coaching crew as an assistant coach to head coach Alistair Clarkson. Uh, it speaks volumes for us to have the two grand final coaches from last year to, to wrap those around uh, the very elite players in the competition. Um, we'll still have another assistant coach to a point and we'll get to that in the coming weeks. But the head coach, coach Alistair Clarkson, Chef de Mission Eddie Maguire. We've appointed Darren Burgess from Port Adelaide Football Club as head of fitness and Jared Healy is coming on as chairman of selectors. We've tried to prove to the players that we will put the very best people uh, in control of this team. And I'm delighted to say that the concept that we have developed with the elite players in the competition is to only include players who have uh, been honoured with all Australian selection in the past or who achieved that this year. And to have uh, 10 of those players work with us on the concept and lock in to play has become very significant to prove to everybody that this will be the very best of the very best in the league. Uh, the players uh, that have committed include Luke Hodge, Patrick Dangerfield, Joel Selwood, uh, and uh, good question. Joel Selwood, did I say? Yeah. Yep. Sorry, can I start that bit again? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we've had we have an ad that we'll put out today, and it involves Luke Hodge, Scott Pendlebury, Patrick Dangerfield, and Joel Selwood. Uh, for them to commit and to be involved in this series will be fantastic. Uh, and I think that we'll also be able to prove that the remainder of the squad, being all Australian, I know we will have a couple of injuries along the way, but when those players get replaced by other all Australian players, we can prove the quality of the squad. Uh, tickets go on sale today. There was an email that was sent out a couple of days ago. We've already sold one tenth of the tickets for the game. So we're expecting a very good and quick take up of the tickets. I'll hand over to Ross and he can tell you about why he might like to be involved. Yeah, from a personal point of view, when Mark and Alistair approached me, um, I had a couple of questions. Is you know what support and, and how serious was it being taken? Because obviously it's an Australian team, so the fact there would be you know the players of the calibre already mentioned and a serious, really all Australian team, was uh, a real incentive for me as a coach to work with that quality of athlete um, through that that would be representing Australia and particularly Alistair, you know, as a dual premiership coach. Um, you know, to, to get the opportunity to work with him and really be in an elite environment and the fact that it was a one-off test in Perth where our, our, you know, the, the support for the Australian team historically, you know, I think we've had crowds of upwards of 40,000. When I put all that together and, and, you know, for me an opportunity to contribute back to the game and get outside of club land, I think it would be great for my personal growth and a wonderful opportunity to, to improve to enjoy a unique experience. So when I put all that together, it was a really easy decision. Mark, is this the future of this concept, one-off tests? I would hope that this proves to be the, the blueprint for the future in terms of collecting the best coaching staff and the best players for the competition. Uh, whether that is still just a one-off test or not, I don't know. But in working with these 10 players, we said to them, what will deliver what we need to deliver this year and the idea was to bring just to, to one test and to bring that to Perth. The future of the series could be could go a couple of ways. Uh, we think it's important to collect the very best and participate together in, in some form, and, and international rules is that at the moment. But there's quite some possibility that we may take a series to the United States in, in the next year or two and, and bring Ireland to the United States and play in Central Park in New York and play in Boston and really create some excitement about uh, collecting this group of people together. How does that market, I guess, our sport in the United States, given that what you're playing is a, a hybrid of the two sports? Yeah, it is, and, and that has uh, meandered a little bit in recent times. It, it used to be a representation of the, the All-Australian team, and then we started selecting players according t to the type of player and, and the uh, possibility of success for the game. 
And then in the last couple of series, we really haven't been able to prove that we could put the very best team together. So first and foremost, this is about collecting the very best players in the land and putting them into a team. Uh, if, if the players are prepared to support this, and if the very best of our coaching staff are prepared to support this, then it's got a long future. Mark, how does this work with the players? Let's say there's a number in the, of the two grand finalists who are selected like They have their break, they are expected to train. How's it going to work with players maintaining fitness and training leading up to the game? Uh, Darren Burgess' role will be to contact every individual club conditioning coach and to set up a program for that player. Remember, they're on annual leave and this will come right in at the end of their annual leave period. They're either just back at, 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 back at their club or just about to be back at their club. So it, it still will be that they'll need to concentrate on their fitness, and in particular, uh, where we have a disadvantage is kicking the round ball. And they'll have to spend the last two or three weeks of their annual leave period uh, practising kicking the ball because we'll only have a short run into the match. Have you did you consider, instead of the international rules, continuing doing a state of origin or an all-star concept or anything, or was it always going to be international rules? Uh, having travelled to Ireland with the team last year, and we were incredibly disappointed with the way that panned out. We were, we were thrilled to put together an all-Indigenous team and with an Indigenous coach. But when we were looking at the quality of the team we had compared to Ireland, we knew we had to have one more go at getting this right. And to go back to those star players and say, what does it take for you to be involved in this? And they said, you need to change the time frame so that this is towards the end of the annual leave period, not the middle of it. Uh, we think a one test series will be better, other than Patrick Dangerfield, who said he'd, he'd love to play best of seven and play it every game. Um, and, and it was about proving the quality of their teammates to them. They don't want to play in this match if we're going to fill up the bottom half of the team with players who have barely played for their club, which had happened in, in a couple of series recently. So once we said, well, we'll make it all Australian, uh, are you in? And um, to my delight, of the 12 players we were talking to, 11 of those players committed with inside of the first week. One of those has since been injured in Joe Watson. Uh, and uh, the 12th player, I think uh, his wife might be expecting a baby around that time, so didn't commit. But having those high caliber players, I have no doubt and uh, it's not a marketing campaign I think when people talk truthfully about why they want to be involved so in the past we've selected a squad might have been might have been a squad of 80 it gets whittled down to 40 by the time we get to the end we're actually adding players at the end to fill up the numbers we're building this team in a different way We've got 10 players who are reasonably well locked in and we've announced you know, four or five of those today. Uh, we will do it opposite this year. We will lock those guys in and we'll fill the team up come the end of the season. Ross, what have you liked about this series in the past and what have been the issues that you've seen with it from you know, watching from outside? Well, what I've liked is some of the exciting games. It's been going for a long period of time. You know, My own personal experience, I went to Ireland in 1984 the Victorian schoolboys coached by Don Scott and played with guys like Gary Lyon and Stephen Silvani and, and John Blakey. So, you know, I've experienced the game firsthand. I uh, really enjoyed the game, the hybrid rules, and I know the Irish enjoyed it. And, and also, in my period in the game, we, we've seen, you know, when you talk about, well, what do you get out of a take in New York? At the end of the day, you know, Jim Stein's to come, come through and Ty Canale and, you know, and there's a few guys in the game now that, that we could list. I mean, unless... There's been some pioneers and some risks taken and you know some excitement generated. Those stories probably don't don't happen. So I think at any level we can expose our game anywhere in the world and, and put the, the best Aussie rules has to offer in one spot. I think it's really exciting. The fact it's happening on home soil, you know, to get Dangerfield and Pendlebury and those guys and Selwood in the one spot gelling together, for me it's it's been incredibly exciting. I think the problems of the past have been alluded to. I think you know that um, you know the patriotism and playing for your country. Sometimes, what put the series at risk was not being played in, in, in the spirit we would have liked. So a little bit of on-field violence probably crept in, and, but we know that that's not part of the agenda. I think the dilution of of the Australian the All Australian team. I didn't particularly like myself. The the fact is we've got strong commitments. Um, we'll, we'll give it from our very best players. Everyone will just fall into line because everyone wants to experience. You know, playing with the best players and the best teams. So, you know, over a long period of time, it's been been a, a, a great exhibition game. It's been it's been some real excitement, and uh, I, I see nothing but positivity 
in, in the way it's been constructed now. As a coach, do you believe State of Origin's dead? Oh, it's certainly, and again, we, we all grew up and we, we know the, the excitement around State of Origin, and, but it died a death for a reason because the parochialism of clubs in season, the risk of injury makes it very, very difficult. But you know, to come together at the end of the season, we, we talk about it's their off season, but you know, the, the pros and the best, that, there's a reason they're the best. They never stop, really. They, they, they're in a period of active rest and conditioning, so they'll just kick it up a gear and, and present themselves in great shape. Yeah, State of Origin has its own significant challenges, and at some level we'll all like to see it, but I think we deal with the harsh realities of you know, how much clubs invest in, you know, in their players in the whole season. To, to get that in season would be very difficult. Mark, where is Australian rules footy at now as far as a footprint in America? Uh, very good question because there are some uh, over a thousand participants in the States who fly themselves around from city to city each week. Uh, I met with some in, when I was in Boston a couple of years ago and it's, uh, it, it is an amazing community feel, mostly driven by expats, but uh, increasingly they, they collect people from uh, college systems that have been playing other sports and come and try the game. What we have found though is that there is a, an incredible pool of talented sports people who know nothing about our game, who have missed out on selection uh, usually in basketball and we've put them through combines over the last two years and we're starting to pull uh, talent to Australia to give the game a go. If a couple of those make it I think you'll, uh, you'll see it really open up in the States. Speak to some of your players about getting involved, or is there any particular guys? No, well, there's a well, that's a good thing. There's a really strong uh, filtering process. They need to have been all Australian or um, make the all Australian team this year. So clearly, we've got some high level performers, you know, and I can't speak for selectors and I've got no inkling, but you know, players like uh, Nathan Fife and Hayden Ballantyne, you know, and Aaron Sanderlands, you know, they're, they're right in the mix for that sort of role, aren't they? So um, you know, I'd be thrilled for them to experience what, what I'm hoping to experience. Be around the best, um, learn off them, and, and enjoy the moment and enjoy the challenge of pain. You know, a super athletic, you know, talented Irish team. I was told by someone downstairs if I don't get Nat Fife into the team, not to come back. So <laughs> uh, we'll see where that goes. Mark, how long would you expect the two teams to be in Perth for? And do you expect there to be a bit of activity around the game? Either? Days either side of it. Yeah, there will, and that's still to be finalised. Uh, the group normally meets uh, for a few days at the venue and trains uh, in and around the venue, so that will happen. Uh, we're still finalising the rest of the program.